science classrooms don't have adequate water supplies, gas lines, not enough lab tables, um, not enough room for students to work in groups that we need to. We just don't have the, the science resources or facilities that we need. We have four classrooms that are very similar to this as far as our science rooms. So this hallway is third floor. Um, this floor has been rebuilt so many different times that there's actually a ledge right here to get in the classroom. This is something that a feasibility study did as far as being handicap accessible. Um, you know, that a couple of our classrooms have that issue. This used to be one student or one um, community came up these steps and then they're open to the entire building. So basically from there, we had to watch them on camera then you be walked around to the front of the main office. Uh, for one year we had a, basically a door greeter, someone that sat out here waiting for people to come. They got buzzed in from the office, came up here, that person walked them. So if not, once they get up here, they're open to these classrooms, stairwells, they can go wherever they wanted. So safety, um, school safety wise, it was, a, it was a must to move the offices down to the other side. Um, plus, with our customer service, as far as coming up to the door, it's not handicap accessible out there because there are steps coming up from the street. So we moved that over to Riley Street also so um, community could come, uh, handicap accessible could get into the building a lot easier that way. They basically heat with I, I, the uh, non-motorized fans most of the time. Some of the newer ones have been converted to a fan that actually pulls heat, uh, air from the bottom and pushes it back out the top. Very old-fashioned, not done anymore. They're very hard to get parts for, and uh, we actually had a fire in one of them. Auditorium, still the original one. Uh, we still hold it for class meetings. Um, when I meet with teams, when we do our plays at the end of the year in here, play for the winter um, also takes place in here. We actually use this now as a classroom because we don't have enough room for one of our classes while the band's here. Um, the problem with this is I can't fit everybody in here at once. So we have one grade level at a time, and actually the entire building, I don't technically have anywhere I can put the entire student body at one time. Now last time we had plays, it was in the winter, we had three people that came that um, were wheelchair bound. We don't really have seating for that, and when they come, they have to come the elevator over there, so somebody needs to stay downstairs, wait for them to get there with an elevator, uh, key, get them on the elevator, bring them up, escort them, they have to come all the way down and around. The stage is not handicap accessible, um, other than going out all the way around and coming in the back door back there. So this hallway, obviously, um, the three floors are all identical to this, except for the one jut out due to the um, utility box there. But basically, passing periods come through, we have half our student body going on one of these three floors. So when everybody goes through this very narrow hallway, and over time you can see it's been brought out through the um, project, or whatever it may be. This black box here, all of the data, um, all of the wires that are ran for the, the wireless internet throughout the building, couldn't be ran in the wall, so I actually need to do these black boxes around um, in the hallways. This one, fire code is too low, so we need to build the wall out to accommodate for that. Um, but those are in every hallway throughout the building. Let's open that ceiling up and see where the leak is. Well, the problem is you have miles and miles of piping in this building. You don't know where that leak originated from to fix it. Band room during band class, seventh grade and eighth grade. Um, we have seventh grade in there first period, eighth grade second period. Um, seventh grade and eighth grade both normally have around 70 kids. So there's not enough room in there for band practice or the equipment. So we practice in there. They practice in this doorway out here. They practice in the cafeteria. They practice in the hallway. Practice out in the up in the auditorium. During the day, um, we have three lunches. One lunch is roughly 120, but the other two lunches are 245 kids, um, give or take, or based off each year. We have 246 seats in there. So one of our lunches is right at past the other seat is filled, and it takes the entire half hour to get those students through lunch. On certain days, depending on what we feed them, there are days where we have one complete row um, of students that are still in here that will be late to class because we couldn't get them through lunch in time. We have two PE classes going on throughout the day. Each of them are 30 to 35 people in each one. So we have 60 to 65 students that are in here for gym. Um, we don't have any outside facilities for them to go. We have a parking lot. So I'm talking to the PE teachers, they tell me regularly what new lessons they could do with an outdoor facility. 
Um, it's amazing what type of lessons they can come up with. They, they do a great job in here as far as meeting our students' needs and the state standards. But at the same time, we can expand our curriculum by a lot if we had that outside. For school, we have three sets of practices we need to try to fit in somehow. So we practice, we do it on a rotation basis. We practice here, we bus kids to a villa, we bus kids to Rome City. When we hold a school meeting in here, what is the number on that? Uh, yeah, I know. 536. 536 is the, the seating number. Capacity. Yeah, seating capacity. As you know, we have a student body of 580. So when we do Veterans Day program, I-STEP celebrations, I-STEP prep, when, anytime I want to meet with the entire student body, we are in here. We fill up the entire bleachers and we fill up basically three rows worth of on the floor um, seating.